Bonjour, hello and welcome to Max Mountain World. Bonjour, hello. Today the 29th of March, Sunday and the 12th day of confinement. And as I'm out on my walk, I go for my walk around inside the building. It involves a little trek of about 50 metres outside the building just to go from one part round to the garage and the washroom and stuff. And it's a tremendous time these walks for thinking. And one thought I have quite regularly is what's changed and more to the point, what hasn't changed? Now we were forecast for rain, quickly followed by snow, and that's exactly what's happening. We seem to have these sort of light hailstones falling. Let's see if I can pick some of that up. Very, very light. So the temperature just dropped about 8 degrees in the space of about 20 minutes. So this is precipitating quite heavily here, and it could produce some decent white stuff. Not that it really matters, but just head round now. Nobody about. One of the things that changes, yeah, there's people still working and whatnot. They've got to drive to work and things. But no vehicles at all. And the snow's going pretty rotten as well. I've got this black snow effect over by the lift here. And uh, yeah, the remnants of previous snowfalls. Normally this week, with a forecast like that and the weather starting to happen, we'd have this car park would be completely locked with parked vehicles, but just nothing. Absolutely nothing. I will just say that uh, normally when we have a sort of snow drought like this, uh, the snow down the bottom here wouldn't be allowed to degrade to such a degree. The preparation, the piece that happens overnight uh, they, they would bring snow from somewhere else, drag it in and make it perfect again by the morning. So here we have, if I zoom in into a dark area, you can see it is actually snowing fairly heavily. So looking over towards Cravu, and yeah, it's pretty heavy over there too. So the snow's coming in today as forecast, today and tomorrow. Supposed to have about seven or eight centimetres of snow. We'll see how that shapes up. Not that it's relevant because I'm inside normally and that stuff is outside. So, what would I normally be doing on a Sunday afternoon? Well, with conditions like that, I probably wouldn't be skiing. I would probably be banging in a little bit of work. Uh, this apartment would not be empty. It would be uh, full of all the gear of clients or clients themselves as well. And I'd probably be in here replacing a light bulb or checking out something that the clients didn't realise that's how it works sort of thing. There's other things as well. Here's some of the antics of the clients. They clean floors and stuff and then they leave chairs on tables. Uh, terrible. And the amount of chairs that I have to repair is absolutely ridiculous. And on two occasions I've almost broken my wrist dismantling sort of mountains of chairs, oops, head off the side, but I forgot that was there. Um, yeah, dismantling these mountains of chairs that clients leave. Another thing as well that I have to repair on a regular basis is these things. These are in French are called canapés, bed cities, and normally they're located between the two wall lights. It's a requirement so that when it's used as a sleeping environment, it has a light for each place at night. Now, 
clients move furniture around. I don't know, in a residence, in a hotel, in a holiday chalet, whatever. I wouldn't dream of moving furniture around. But, but these guys do. And what happens is it breaks the furniture, it damages the floor. Um, we can see some stuff here. It's blackened and they've tried to repair it themselves. You can see dents in the floor and stuff. And not only that, it marks up the walls. Uh, it, <laughs> it just doesn't do anything any good at all and just gives me extra work completely. I'm up on the third floor just now. This is the one that's been the most, the, the third floor apartments, the ones where the, there's been the most challenge to the architect due to the roof shapes and stuff. As you can see, it's pretty weird in here. But one of the things as well is the architects sometimes make mistakes. Uh, and one is the, there's no light over the dining area here, just uh, over there. But again, the clients have moved that around, so that's not where it's supposed to be. But that's why I've provided this uh, standard lamp, so that they can have some kind of light next to their, uh, their dinner table. The snow's getting a bit heavier now. Another thing they do as well is they leave furniture out here. They, sit, they like to sit in the balcony, take a chair out, but they leave them out. So when this weather comes in, blowy or whatever, it just soaks them, damages stuff. And I'm going to take a wee look at the mountain here, actually. We've got a little bit of a sunny spell going on at the top there. Just this line of sun that seems to be in amongst the weather up there. Now, the skiing conditions up there must be fantastic, but unfortunately, not allowed. So just continuing my tour around, and quite a lot of things. Normally, the obvious one, there would be people around, but uh, obviously not the case. So I'll continue my walk around. I don't know why this corridor light is on. I must check the electric box and see if there's a timer that's gone a bit haywire or something, because I noticed that last time round here. So, I often think that sometimes if people are actually watching me, if there was actually anyone around here, well there's a few, I think there's seven of us in total up here in the Lazar 1800, uh, they probably kind of get a bit curious as to why this fella's walking backwards up and down stairs and it's it's a good exercise good for the thighs and good for the cardio as well not just going down them but going up them the control factor is good as well it helps keep balance uh, there's all sorts it's very it's not as easy as it looks and I'm not making it look that easy so this is one of my exercises and I'll go up and down normally about five different floors of stairs, maybe ten times each time I do this. And of course one thing that's changed is that the whole place is locked. <laughs> Normally left open for reasons of security. Normally we would have more than just a couple of Hoover's sitting there would have a, a, a basket chariot thing for uh, dirty laundry that people can put dirty laundry into as well. Also, that door, I would have that so that it was shutting like a, a Rolls Royce door, not banging. It's the change in temperature that's uh, changed the fluidicity, whatever you call it, of the liquid inside that controls the closing mechanism. One big change is that there's no noise. You'd have kids getting screamed at by parents, you'd have kids playing, you'd have parents yakking away, you'd have all sorts going on, but there's just nothing. Another thing mid-afternoon, that pool would be heaving with people, but nope. I think these Snowfalls are going to be very much showers, patchy stuff. That's sunshine that I saw at the mountain there. There's some more over towards uh, Puissant Vincent, station at the side, the very side of the Parc des Ecrans, and just uh, this side of the, the frontier of Italy, which is the other side of the Black Mountain ahead of us to the right there. 
Another obvious one is the lifts not working and nobody here and the only thing that's taking advantage of the lifts not working check this guy out enjoying his wee storm With this slight hail, very light hail effect, it's actually quite noisy. This is the noisiest this place has been for a long time. So yeah, that's another walkie around. And it's really good just to be able to have time to do thoughts. This might potentially get very boring doing walking around inside a big building every day, once or twice a day and stuff, but it's a time for thought, it's a time to keep the mind active as well as the body and limbs and things active, do a bit of observation, do a bit of checking up on stuff, uh, just all that. So it's change. Some stuff doesn't, like the weather. Some stuff does, like all the other stuff. So anyway, that's uh, day 12 of the confinement. Uh, confinement within the building, not just within my place. Because in previous videos, previous confinement videos I've done in this series, you'll see that this building is secure and sterile as far as viruses go. So anyway, that's uh, the video for today, and uh, thanks very much for watching. Remember, you can share this with people, tell people all about it. If you like this, tell other people, tell me about it, comment below, uh, hit like thingy, whatever, but subscribe as well. And when you've subscribed, you can click on that little bell thing, click on all, and you'll be notified of future videos that I put up to my channel on YouTube. So until the next time, thanks for watching again. Ciao.